Hey everybody, it's Dean Dave again. I um, continue to work on this um, dungeon that I've been working on for the last few days called the, uh, originally it was called Vampire Story. <clears throat> Basically set in a five section or five map dungeon. And today I'm gonna continue that with um, by stocking it out a little bit more. At least something to do before dinner time. I thought I'd just move straight on to the um, document phase. So if you've been following, I've used a lot of random rolls and um, to create the basics of this dungeon. So here's what we know so far. We've got our dungeon. Let's take a look at it in case you haven't seen it yet. It's a five map dungeon. Um, starts with a ground level um, entrance, like a big fortress with a big outside um, circular facade or circular, yeah, facing. Uh, it's got two levels that go above it with some secondary balconies in the front that look really cool, and then has two sub levels. This is the first one, and this is the second. <clears throat> Those are both connected. Um, to each other horizontally. So you got kind of a cool L-shaped dungeon, which is a little bit different. Uh, the maps are by Tim Harton of Paratime.ca, who's um, definitely one of my favorite creators in the business. He worked for Wizards of the Coast and did the maps for Dungeon of the Mad Mage. So uh, big props to, to Tim for allowing me to license these maps and build them out, <coughs> which I'll eventually give to patrons. I'll probably do uh, one layer of one of the sections for free, and that section can kind of live on its own, and I'll probably have um, the rest of it be um, for patrons only. So, all right. So here's what we know about the dungeon. It is ruled by a vampire named Loredana. She is um, awful evil. She's drawn to this special place because she envies another creature's possessions. We know that she um, has a pit fiend, which she keeps in area 16 on sub level two. <coughs> Excuse me. I think it's sub level one. Um, this dungeon used to be the monk fortress for the Society of the Vigilant Clan. Uh, they imprisoned fiend to learn more about the future. They teamed up with a lich named Kazogdal. Uh, they basically imprison the fiend using Kazago's help, and eventually, or later on, uh, adventures cleared up later, but they never found Zanesha. Years later, Loredana, who was an archaeologist in her life, ended up discovering the vertex of Revelation. So originally it was called um, the Revelation Vertex, but I want to call it the Vertex of Revelation. Um, and she's been kind of. Um, bullying Zanesha for the last couple hundred years to, to give up. Um, Zanesha is super smart. She's a pit fiend and she's got um, incredibly high intelligence and super charisma. So it's been a difficult game. Um, the one thing that Loredana has in her favor is that Zanesha is in prison. Therefore, she can't use any of her powers. But um, yeah, this is, this is kind of where the story comes in. Um, Loredana has uh, some NPCs who are working out in front of the uh, fortress and they're posing as scientists, like archaeologists basically, who are studying it like different different sections. Um, originally I was just going to have them actually be legit scientists, but I think it'd be kind of cooler um, to have a couple of them actually be doppelgangers. Uh, they're led by Rich Noble. So my thought is this, like originally I was going to have like the whole, this layer be kind of fake, but I was like, eh, that's kind of boring. It's kind of big to have like be like a total fake layer. Like I don't want to like waste an entire map just for cobwebs. So they are going to act as not just like the bureaucratic defense, but also frontline defense. Um, a doppelganger is a CR2 creature, which means um, they have 450 experience. Um, realistically, the characters can probably take on, uh, let's see, 
and I'm looking at, I got a chart. So if you ever see me look up, I've got charts on my walls for um, experience points. So yeah, it'd be a hard encounter, but not impossible. So if they fought four doppelgangers gangers at a time, doppelgangers would probably get surprised unless they saw through their BS. But cool thing about doppelgangers, and let's take a look at them, is that they have um, some really good stats. So here's the doppelganger stat block on roll 20. Uh, they are SRD, so we get to use them. Um, they're good at stealing secrets. Um, they can blend into any group or community. They're hedonistic swindlers, which means they usually work in alone or in small groups. Um, and they go from con to con. So in this case, they're gonna be working as part of our story for Loredana as like their, their cover. Like they're gonna pretend to be scientists who are, are fake in the place. Um, they are changelings, so they, they usually are almost all um, adopted. Um, they're shape changers. I usually make, like, I, I like doppelgangers a lot, and, like, if um, Joe ever sees this video, he'll probably joke. And by the way, don't watch any of this stuff if you're in my Saturday game, because there's spoilers. <laughs> but um, I like them because I think they're kind of a sad story, all of them. Like, they, they're almost always left behind. Um, they're never raised by their own kind. And I, I assume, assume that they're, like, rejected. Um, I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> oh, excuse me. It's that time of year. Uh, the Shape Chambers Ambushers have Surprise Attack. Basically, that means, like, they're gonna do whatever they can to, um, stay hidden. Like, even though they're, they're pretty good combatants, so let's look at the kind of their, their fighting characteristics, their stat block. Great um, hit points, fantastic decks. They're almost superhuman dexterity, um, like, faster than any athlete. So when I do, um, when I run doppelgangers, I always make, like, their reflexes be, like, one of the first things that gives them away. They're pretty hardy, too. They got good constitution. Above average intelligence, but they're not geniuses. So that's fine. I mean, all they need to do is be able to fake it. Uh, but they are wise, so they, they, they do have a little bit more wisdom. Deception, they get a double proficiency bonus in. So I can tell this because they're CR... Th oh, they're CR3. Okay. Probably a good thing I looked at that. Um, <laughs> they uh, have deception... Um, plus six. So with their charisma bonus, that means they're getting a plus four proficiency bonus, which is double normally. So usually monsters, certain monsters will have expertise in certain areas because it's like part of their natural affinity. So like goblins, for example, have um, double stealth bonus. Uh, things with tentacles sometimes have double athletics for grappling. But um, <clears throat> they've got extra deception because they've got a couple of good things going for them. One, they can shape change into any humanoid that it's seen. Statistics stay the same, but uh, it, it looks like a carbon copy of it. Um, they're really good at surprising people, and they're really good at ambushing. So they're going to try, like, anytime it feels like they're about to get the jigs up. I would say the moment, like, someone does, like, an insight check on them, um, like, like, they start suspicious, like, even if that suspicion is there, um, they're like they should attack immediately with a surprise round um in in my thought in my mind it's they're gonna be like super fast to respond to stuff uh and they can read thoughts so they can read the surface thoughts of a creature there's no role required so if you in this is how uh um a meeting with the doppelganger is going to go. You're going to come up to it, and it's going to start reading your mind right away, and it's going to start talking to you, and it's going to be saying the right things. So it's going to get advantage on its deception, intimidation, persuasion checks, which means deception is essentially, essentially a plus 11. If the doppelganger gets, like, if the person's like, well, this is bullshit, like, the doppelganger is, like, not even going to hesitate. It's going to be like, pow! And, like, knock the guy right in the face with its powerful slam attack, and it's going to get a 3D6 plus... It's going to get... Um, advantage on it, and if anybody ever argues against it, just say, like, it was, it's been reading your thoughts for, like, two minutes. It n knew the moment that the jig was up and it attacked. Okay, so this is our first major encounter of the dungeon, which is going to happen out front. And it's going to go right, <coughs> right around here, right in, like, 
this uh, probably in section two i think it'd be cool if they had like a little encampment right here like a little scientist camp um this is this is kind of the big question that i get a lot is how to balance encounters okay so this is going to be i want it to be a fifth level adventure but it might be a little bit low but we're we're going to try to make it work anyways um the best way to do this is to think about it mathematically and in terms of, like having an encounter outside that's really tough is not a bad thing because the adventurers can always leave and come back like if, if they get into an encounter that happens right here they're not like four levels down in the dungeon and stuck there away from a long rest they can be like oh shit something's going on and they can go back to town or they can rest right there i mean if you let them but um let me show you how to start doing um and counterbalancing, which is going to be a really, really important thing to understand in the game. Now, after a while, you get a sense for it, and like, if you're like me, like, I, I just don't even factor it in anymore, especially when I'm playing like a, a wizard's module. Like, I've run a Dungeon of the Mad Mage um, seven nights a week for my patrons of the Platinum Tier or higher, and um, they run into dangerous stuff. Um, I recently had <clears throat> Party of Five with mostly <clears throat> level fours run into two gray slot which challenge rating nine creatures i mean you're talking about a super deadly encounter um the slot it, like they almost all died it was almost a full tdk they managed to escape and the slot didn't follow because like they um they were meant to guard the area that they're in so they're not going to get chased off and they're, they're smarter than that i mean they're, they're chaotic creatures but you know they're going to do crazy shit while they're there but they're going to still do what the boss says more out of fear than a sense of law and order Anyways, TLDR, I don't mind for running tougher stuff. But when you're creating an adventure, and especially if it's if you're brand new and you don't have a good feeling for the game, or you're creating it to publish and you've got a wide variety of people who are going to be using it, then you need to use the rules that are um, that wizards set in the DMG. And where are you going to find that? And this is one of those support books you're going to have. If you want to be <coughs> a content creator for 5th edition, you need to know your DMs game. Um, like, through and through. Um, the rules for creating encounters start on page 81 of the DMG, and um, there's going to be two really important tables in there. First, you're going to have your um, XP threshold by character levels, okay? And then the next one is on the next page, your adventure day XP. And what this means is you've got the adventure day XP, all right, first let's, let's discuss the difference between um, encounter difficulty experience and given experience. Encounter difficulty, or given experience is the experience your characters earn after they fight a combat. If they fight a goblin, they get 50 experience, which they can split the number of ways of the characters. If they fight two goblins, it's 100 experience, three goblins, etc. Encounter difficulty experience works different because there is a multiplier for the number of monsters. Um, one goblin is one goblin is X difficult, but two goblins is 1.5, or is is actually three times harder than one goblin. So one goblin is hard, three or two goblins is three times as hard as one goblin, and then um, four goblins ends or three goblins ends up being six times as hard. Now, this might sound confusing, but there's actually a, an encounter multiplier table right on the same page here on page 82. And it, it gives you the multipliers you put in for it. So let's say we're gonna have our doppelgangers encounter. So one doppelganger is a CR. Um, here, we'll, we'll just make this out and I'll kind of show you kind of a way to build it. Um, it's CR is three and the um, XP, it's given XP, like the amount that your characters, that the people get is 700 after. That's if they fight just one. Now, when they're fighting just one, it's going to equal this. And if they're fighting two, it's going to be 1.5 times the number there. So it's actually going to be this number times two times 1.5. So this is the encounter difficulty XP that you're gonna have for it. So this might be a little bit confusing, but basically, like I said, 
two doppelgangers is going to be three times as dangerous as one doppelganger. Three, uh, if you have three to six doppelgangers for a party against a party of five, it's going to be a multiplier of two. So it's going to end up being 700 or 700 experience times the three doppelgangers times a double multiplier. So 4,200 experience. Okay. And it's, it goes on, like it continues like that until 7 to 10 where it gets to 2.5, uh, 11 to 14 where it gets to 3, and then 15 or more where it gets to 4, and that, it just stays flat at 4 because of a economic concept called the law of diminishing returns. Essentially, it's not going to be any different beyond that point. Other things to note with that, this only applies to parties of 3 to 5 characters. If you have less then three characters, just two, then it's gonna be actually, your multipliers are all gonna shift down a level. So one monster is 1.5 times as difficult for one, for two people as it would be for three, and so on. And if the party's larger, if there's six or more people, um, you shift it all down one, and then, uh, and then when it's just one monster, it's only half as difficult as normal. Which is why if you have a party of six, of a holder is gonna be half as easy as a beholder would be against a party of five within reason. I mean, there's, you know, this is very loose math. Um, there's there's a million different factors that go into it. So, I mean, whether or not they have, your party's got certain kind of um, character makeups, what kind of magic items they have, uh, what's the environment like, all these things play in. But this is kind of a, a loose and fast way to help you plan out um, your encounters and understand how to balance your encounters. All right, so, Back to what we were talking about. Um, doppelgangers are 700 each. Um, we have to factor in what it would be per character, and then we're going to reference that with our encounter difficulty XP per character chart, or XP thresholds per character level, which is on page 82. This tells us how difficult a combat will be. So if you have five characters fighting one doppelganger, so you take 700 divided by five, they would get, it's 140 encounter experience. Um, that would make it an easy encounter. Like they're gonna beat this guy down in one round, like boom, 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 boom. You know, um, fifth level characters, I mean, you're talking about fighters with two attacks, uh, or martial classes with two attacks, uh, wizards with like fireballs and haste and stuff. So they're gonna beat it up pretty fast. So we probably don't wanna do that. I mean, it'd be nice like a little like order to a fight, but I think we want to have it a little bit tougher. Um, and keep in mind too, these doppelgangers' jobs aren't going to be to um, fight. Like their job is to try to uh, trick the characters into thinking that there's nothing beyond what they want to do. So let's take a look. Uh, 2100 encounter experience for two, because it's going to be two doppelgangers times the multiplier of 1.5. So it ends up being kind of like three. That's going to give us 428 experience, and that ends up being close to a medium encounter for a party of five. Uh, still pretty good, so we might go with that two doppelganger sounds pretty good, and maybe toss in like, um, maybe like only two of them are actually doppelgangers. <clears throat> maybe one of them's a doppelganger, and the rest are like uh, thugs. Uh, that might be good. And we do it the same way too. So if the doppelganger is working with thugs, which are challenge rating uh, one half, which means they give. Are they one half or one? Uh, I think they're one half, pretty sure. Um, they would give 100 experience each, so you would factor it the same way. You have the doppel base doppelganger giving 700 experience plus 100 for each thug that it's with, and you'd use the normal multiplier divided by five, and that's how much it, uh, encounter experience is worth per character. Um, this that might be one route we take if if I can't get the number of doppelgangers I want. I want to kind of have four um, people faking it, but it's going to be kind of tough because they they get harder and harder with each one. Um, and remember, these guys are super fast, and if they all get a surprise round, you're talking about they're going to be dealing an average of 14 damage a hit with advantage. Pow, pow, pow. Like, so really tough guys. All right, so moving on to three. Three doppelgangers. You know, you've got 700 experience per doppelganger times their actual number, which is three, times two for their multiplier. Divide that by five, that's 840 encounter experience each. At this point, we are moving into hard to deadly territory on our uh, encounter difficulty XP or XP thresholds per character. 
and that gets to be um, really difficult at that point. Um, so I think I want to pull it back some, and I think what I want to do, and I think to make it more interesting combat, since it's going to be five characters, instead of having three super tough doppelgangers, let's do our first encounter is going to be doppelganger plus uh, thugs. And just to double check to make sure that I'm not going crazy, I want to make sure that a thug is as much experience. So thug, thugs are pretty cool because they have pack tactics too. Yeah, so they're one half, but they can be brutal. Like if you have a bunch of thugs fighting one combat, they've got two melee attacks with advantage. And they're always going to be, like they're going to always try to dogpile on, um, on people to uh, uh, get the maximum number of um, attacks and stuff. I had this happen in Mad Mage, and they actually, I mean, this was a party of fifth level, third level characters, and they just got beat. So they're one half, give 100 experience each. Two of them is going to give, um, here we'll set up some, yeah, that's right. Um, if you're not an Excel genius, it's okay. <laughs> I've just been doing it for a long time. Uh, yeah, we want that one to be... Um, is that where we want it? No, let's keep it one. Okay, cool. So... So you'll see, like, two thugs is worth 300. Oop, I didn't work. I didn't work here. Uh, needs to be times two. There we go. Okay, so what we can do is maybe have three thugs and two doppelgangers. Let's see. So 600 plus 2100. It's still only five, so the multiplier is not going to change on them. Um, we're going to divide that by five. It gives us 540 encounter XP, which puts us right over medium close to hard. So I think that's a good spot to start with on our um on our place um and they're gonna have like a little bit a little like encampment in this this niche here um let's um do this we don't we want we want to fool our characters and like um if you put thugs and doppelganger tokens down like if i were to go like this and put a doppelganger there, they're gonna know it's a fake. So <laughs> it might be better to put like, uh, like the noble token, right? Have them dressed up kind of nice, and the characters don't know uh, that these are actually doppelgangers. So we'll we'll change it in into this. Like we'll set it up in the background. We'll say this represents. Um, I thought we could set it up. Okay, that's not a good deal. We'll leave the note for ourselves and then um, give them the correct modifiers. Um, doppelgangers have uh, 52 hit points and an AC of 14. I think there's a way to make double-sided tokens. I'll have to to look into that. I don't see how to do it here. Maybe somebody else knows how to do it. <laughs> but here we've got um, this is our noble token. We probably need to move this to um, let's um your doppelganger. I can never figure out how to get it to drop into the thing like it's supposed to. But, uh, put this guy down. Let's see if it's in our. Okay, cool. And what we'll do is edit this and we'll remove its default 
I'll come back to that. <laughs> so let's put in our couple doppelgangers. I'll have to explore a better way to do this. If somebody has any suggestions, please put it in the Facebook for me. And we'll put in a couple of our thugs. Actually, let's, we'll just make them all look like nobles that way. Um, uh, they have 32 and 11. AC, so crappy AC, so they get beat up pretty quick, but, um, ah, there we go, now I can change it, uh, let's do two, go, change you, So a couple doppelgangers, and we'll we'll want to show a nameplate so we know which one is which. <laughs> and my little dog just bust into the room to see what I was doing. And then we'll have these guys be thugs. They've got 32 and 11. Um, And the characters won't be able to, see, or the players won't be able to see this. So in advance, just make sure that players can't see the uh, details there. And we'll go ahead and copy this. So now we've got um, our three thugs. Um, they're busy researching what's going on. There's two gop doppelgangers among them, and this guy will act like the noble mouthpiece who's gonna. Um, do this and if we look back at our experience with this encounter let's um just let's just do it like start setting up um let's see area two as a dop like two doppelgangers and two or three thugs we'll do our encounter xp Actually, let me leave all this the way to this, and we'll, I'll set up a new sheet. All right. Area, encounter, encounter, XP. Actual XP. Okay. Our encounter is two doppelgangers and three thugs. This is an area two of, of the first level. Hang on a sec. Um, actual XP is two doppelgangers, so 1400 plus uh, 300, so 1700. Um, that ends up being 3400. And we'll do counter. So we're building this for five characters. Huh, interesting. I must have done my math wrong. Still, 680 is, is going to be between medium and hard, so we're still in a good shape there. So two doppelgangers and three thugs. So we have 700 for each doppelganger plus 300 for the thugs. Multiply that times two, we have 3,400 uh, encounter XP. The actual XP is 1,700, and actual XP per character, or given XP, or whatever you want to call it, is going to be one fifth of that. So that is going to be our first encounter. So that's that's pretty simple. That's pretty easy. Um, it's kind of what we've we've uh, already got going on. This is uh, ground level one. Um, and what we need to think about is next is going to be our total. Like, let's. I'm going to go ahead and list all our areas in here. And this is a, like I don't. I don't always do this, but this is a good way to start planning out all your encounters. Um, 
easy way to do this is just <laughs> I think we've got let's see here we've got um how many areas do we have in this big big bad monster uh 31 total areas it looks like I don't see a 32 anywhere so 31 areas in our ground level of the vertex of revelation um we want to get our totals and i'll explain why this is important in just a second so um whoops If you like the music, this is from Michael Gelfi on YouTube. He's got some pretty cool stuff, and he's got a pretty happening Patreon. Um, he and I are starting to do some collaborations, so I'm pretty excited about that. All right, so we've got our totals here, and this is why totals are important. Um, I mentioned earlier that there is an Adventuring Day XP per character, so it's important to understand uh, what that is because your characters or uh, the characters that are playing are going to have um, X number of resources which they can use in a day before they need to have a long rest. And again, this is this is just kind of a loose number to kind of come up with, but that is represented by a chart called your Adventuring Day XP, and it's based on the Encounter XP, Adjusted XP, or whatever. So anything that's in this first couple columns here. For example. And this is on page um, 84 of the DMG. Your Adventuring Day XP for 5th level characters for a party of... Um, for a party of 5. Well, let's say it's per a, a character of 5th level. They are going to have 3,500 total experience that they can earn in a day. Before they need to take a long rest. And that's, that's just an experience. That's not actual giving experience. Um... We've already used up 680 of it, leaving us with about a budget of 200, 2,820. Now, what we can do is this entire level doesn't have to um, equal that amount of daily experience, nor does the entire dungeon. But <clears throat> it's going to give us an indication of how many long rests they're going to need to totally clear this place out. So if we had 3,500 encounter experience for the characters and they went up against, um, let's say 15 encounters, the average experience for each encounter needs to be around 233, which means they need to fight around 15 easy encounters um, to get there. We've already thrown out a hard one right from the new gang, but these are gonna be 15 easy encounters before they're totally depleted of resources and have to take a long rest. Now it's possible. Um, that they can have a long rest inside that level. And it's probably going to be likely, just because it's such a huge map. And it would be kind of goofy to have, like, all these easy encounters. It gets a little bit, like, might get tedious for them. But uh, interestingly, like, a bunch of easy encounters in a row, too, can also um, instill a sense of, like, like, oh, this is easy. So you, you might be able to do that and make them overconfident, which might be something that you want to do. Or... Um, like it wears them down to the point where they don't even notice it. Like they're like, oh, this is simple. You know, they lost a few hit points here and there. And it's kind of like a tragedy of the commons where like each encounter is like sapping like a little bit of their um, their resources until they're, they're totally down. So either which way we can do it. Um, I think for this first level, I, I kind of want to go with that easy mode. Like I want to make it seem like it's not everything that is supposed to, well, no, because we got the doppelgangers out front. Um, maybe we'll do like, one and a half adventuring day xps maybe two on it per level and then have like the final levels be like a lot tougher uh, and there's some other considerations to think about too is like the the final level which i believe is going to be our our first sub level there is really where we're going to have um the characters have to really fight off um uh loredana because, you know, this is her layer up here, and the, the devil's going to be here. But if you saw the last video, you remember that the devil's going to be kind of the tool to defeat her. Um, interestingly, you're going to use the more... It's kind of like the uh, end of... Um, it's exactly like the end of Ragnarok, where you get the big demon to beat up <laughs> the powerful um, uh, uh, 
uh, evil goddess. <laughs> in this case, a, a vampire. But yeah, that's it. That's going to be our first major encounter. I've shown you kind of like what uh, kind of experience that you may get from this encounter. Um, I've demonstrated like how to factor in the encounter experience and like what the idea of the encounter is. Like this is going to be one that's going to start off kind of role playing, and in the moment like the jig is up, like these doppelgangers, um, what they might even do is I might um, like they they're smart enough they probably got like a backup plan in case something bad happens, so maybe they can um, rush to this area and try to get them in the pit trap. Um, it might even make sense to put them in 3A. That might even work better. Yeah. So we're going to shift them all the way down here. Um, cool. So now they're going to have their little encampment here right out front of the... Uh, um, place and if things go south they'll retreat back to here maybe even shut the portcullis behind them and try to get characters to fall into this prison cell but we'll work on that later but uh, yeah that's it for now uh, i think we got a pretty cool little starter encounter here we got this these fake uh, scientists which are gonna end up screwing with the pcs and leading them in the traps and it, it should be a lot of fun anyways thanks for watching um i'll probably do some more of these tomorrow and i'll probably start writing out some of this stuff and showing you how like to format stuff in official fifth edition format anyways peace